G'day guys, welcome to this week's uh, Life on the Hulls. This week I'm gonna tab in the forward bulkhead, the midsection bulkhead, and I'm gonna basically lift the head out from the forward area of the bow of my boat. Uh, you're gonna see me put in a big effort there. It's a little bit of a, uh, a fight and a struggle. And you can see at the end of the day why I'm so sore uh, after doing that. We've got absolutely howling winds here. We've got a big cold change on its way. And uh, we're heading into winter here, so hopefully your restrictions are gonna ease up a little bit. This week I'm surfing the net and I find the sister ship of this, uh, this cat that I'm building, the actual power cat version for sale up in Townsville, up on the Great Barrier Reef up in Northern Queensland. And I've, I'm gonna put a link in the description there for you to go and have a look at, have a look at the specs of the actual boat. Now remembering it's the power cat version, I'm actually doing a sail cat, uh, but there, funnily enough, there's some really nice photos that I've got out of it. I've been uh, plying its way around the Great Barrier Reef and some internal photos that I've never seen before. I can't get enough information like that and I'm gonna put them all up here for you guys to enjoy. I hope you like the look of it and uh, and you know, give me some comments. There's a lot of uh, inf information about the buoyancy of the boat that is gonna come to light as I go through this uh, through this process. I uh, think like bulbous bows, I do need to put some bows on this particular boat as there was a bit of a design flaw in the, uh, in the construction or in the design of it originally. But I'm hoping to rectify that as I go along. Uh, don't forget to like this episode, don't forget to subscribe and check out the Composite Shop channel as well. Plenty going on over there and, uh, and thanks to all my patrons and uh, really thanks for joining me and uh, let's get into some boat building. Eh? So all of my tabbing is done with vinyl ester resin. I use vinyl ester because it actually gives me that quick setup time. It means that within one or two hours, I can actually then go back, remove the peel ply and actually add more tabbing if I need to, add, uh, add in uh, um, composite angle or whatever I need to. Whereas with it, if I was using epoxy, I'd find that I'd have to wait around 24 hours. So it does speed up my time and particularly working on my own, I find that that's really uh, advantageous. Now, the prep that goes into doing the tabbing can take hours. I'll uh, use up all of my remnant 600 double bias that I have left over from when I'm doing my flat sheet and I'll spend that time cutting and trimming these. Now I don't actually mind using a pair of scissors as I've shown before but you'll find that by stockpiling uh, remnants and keeping uh, extras that I have laying around I tend to end up with, with a, a lot of excess tape and the, the good thing about that is I'm using pretty much all of that in my tabbing exercise as you can see. Um, now I use a two 200 millimeter wide piece of 600 double bias as the first tab and the second one is then 300 mil wide so I've effectively got 50 mil or two inches on each side of that tabbing as per this diagram. Really important and that's actually uh, one of the trains of thought with tabbing. There's a number of different trains of thought in this respect but this is the one that I've chosen. I find that that gives that overlap and, and ensures maximum surface area holding that bulkhead in place. The, uh, the bulkhead tabbing goes on and on and on, but uh, I thought rather than sort of, um, you know, just put on heaps of vision of me tabbing, I try to explain myself a little bit more because I do get a lot of questions about my technique. Um, the one thing that i found with it is that it's a very methodical process. It is quite tedious, and as much as I've been showing you guys, it's probably about 1% of the work that actually has gone into getting all these uh, items in place and making sure that I'm getting a good structural and chemical bond here to, uh, to hold this boat together. Cabin sole and I'm standing on here uh, has that water tank under there. I've got so many comments that you didn't strap the tank in, you, how are you going to do the plumbing, etc. Remembering that there's two large access hatches, one right under me there and another one just behind me there where I'm standing now. And that's so important because those hatches are large enough to be able to, uh, to access all of the, the lids of the tanks and also run all the conduits quite easily. I'll have basically arm length distance between each access hole and that's really Really crucial. That has been a huge day. I got in at about 8.30 this morning and did about four solid hours of, uh, of tabbing down here. You can see I've actually finished down this bulkhead along the floor. I've completed the entire sort of uh, sole there and I've also gone up the other wall and down here as well. So that was a pretty effective day. That's two solid layers of 600 double bias. Um, all done with vinyl ester and then a peel pile over the top. So that means tomorrow morning I can come in and start 
to consider how I'm gonna install these. I've got a lot of work to do in here. There's gonna be a lot of adjustment, a lot of uh, uh, tabbing and bracketing and all that sort of stuff and, and some uh, cleats I need to make for the undersides of these modules to make sure they're gonna fit properly. Probably won't continue to do them, but what it'll do, it'll give me the opportunity when I've got nothing else to do, which is never, but to uh, to actually get onto it now. I've got a bit of rubbish here, uh, pretty much done for that part anyway. I still need to tab the, uh, the stern side of this bulkhead here, but that's gonna have to wait. Better off to move along with that region up there. And that bulkhead there that's right there, that's actually gonna fit in the end of there. So there's still a lot to do. I've got plenty of, uh, Plenty of work that I can sort of get on with while we're all in lockdown here and uh, you know, stay isolated, which is great. This bulkhead behind me has been a bit of a pain in my rear for quite some time. It, it actually intersects with this head here and then into this, uh, into this bulkhead here, which is the, the main forward one that intersects with the forward head. So what I need to do is I need to basically take it across to the other side there and then tab it into that main forward bulkhead and uh, and get it in place. The problem is, is it's quite a, an acute angle, if you can see down in here, that tiny little bit in there has to be done correctly to make sure that I can then, when I lift this head out, I can actually get in behind it, tab it correctly and then be able to insert that module back in place. So I've actually left that module uh, a little bit loose for that reason. and. Ultimately, that's why I've left it in place while I put the bulkhead in, because I couldn't imagine the idea of putting the bulkhead in and then not be able to get that head back in and have to chop the bloody head to pieces to actually fit it back in. So at least I know now that it fits. Um, so I'm gonna basically sand along this line here and right up into this other bulkhead here and, uh, and get it basically ready for a fillet to be put in. And then ultimately I'll be able to come back and, uh, and tab it in place. Once it's in place, I can then work on the other side and lift that head out. So that head can be lifted out totally and uh, give me access to it. So I'm gonna get onto it right now. really important to put the packing tape on because if I get a dollop of glue dropped in and lose that module in, it'll be nearly impossible to get out. So this packing tape is a saviour. Always remember to put it on. It saves all of that chance of getting stuck. Right, so I find if I mix up two half cups or almost half cups of vinyl ester and then mix this um, glue thickener into it, which is like a milled fiber. It's like a, a, a strengthened um, glass, chopped up glass. I mix it in two halves and then tip it into one cup. And then I have my cup with my plastic bag in it. I find it much easier to dispense this. So what I have to do though is I like need a catalyst in I need to catalyze it within the cup itself and catalyzing it around 2% because I want it to go up reasonably quickly. But you know, as you can hear in the background, we've got a bit of rain today and the humidity levels are a little bit high. And yes, you're right, I should have a mask on. And you can see this going almost immediately green. So I'll have a look at it there. You can see the, the purple, which is the uh, the vinyl ester and then the green, which is the catalyzed solution. And you really need to make sure that you've got that thoroughly consolidated and incorporated into the, the promoter, almost. And then we can dispense it into our plastic. Ziploc bag, piping bag, whatever you've got. Spin around and that gives you a little bit of pressure and you can see there, 
that, uh, that tip there. Don't cut it off too big either. You want to cut it off like five millimeters wide, no bigger, or you'll end up with the bloody stuff coming out in, in tons. But now I have to apply it all the way down this vertical surface as well. That's why I've got this tape in place just in case it drops and spills. There we go, eh? Because we're trying to form a fillet. It's not just a, a glue, it's actually a fillet. Sort of um, restorative work on the other side of this bulkhead when the time comes. I'm not sure how it's going to go on this vertical surface. What I did do is I wetted it though, with uh, I wetted it out with vinyl ester just to, sort of uh, about an hour ago and it was all tacky, so hopefully it's going to hold the, the resin. If not, I'm going to have to come back and fill it, but it should. Over putting too much in, you don't need a lot. And I find by just giving it a little bit of a wet out with some straight resin an hour before, that tackiness tends to hold it better than it would otherwise. It's actually harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> it's, it's a fairly challenging piece because it has to be put dead square into position and then dead square against the one that I'd already tabbed in place and I had to make sure that I really got it firmly in place before I started uh, filling it. But now it's all filleted. I've basically put peel ply all over. We've got a really nice join along this line here and as I said, I tacked up both sides of the end grain by filling it with resin and then let it tack off. And that actually really aided in holding that, uh, that filleting compound while I got this piece in place. Okay guys, so I filleted this in yesterday. This is now solid, it's, uh, it's done. This whole bulkhead is now fully complete. All I need to do now is tab this region in. Uh, I've got to remove all this peel ply. And uh, you can see here this joint. Is, is like a butt join, so basically it's going to need probably three layers of tabbing. I'm thinking three layers of 600 over just to make that really sound. It'll also be tabbed on the back as well. Uh, I've got to remove these locating screws that I put in uh, earlier yesterday when I actually glued it in place and then fill them with uh, with vinyl ester. Very important that they get filled. Now while I tab this front uh, dog leg bulkhead in, I just want to apologise for the noise in this video guys, I, I just really sometimes struggle with the ambient noise around me, particularly uh, in heavy rain, it, it can be quite daunting uh, trying to get the sound levels right on these videos and uh, and I do struggle with it, it's one of those things, I'm in an industrial area, I, I apologise just about every video, it doesn't seem to matter what mic I use or, or, or whatever, but there's always some sort of uh, noise, be it wind or rain or cars honking airplanes flying over and it does actually affect the uh, the quality of the video and I just really appreciate you guys uh, persevering with the uh, with the with the video series given that uh, you know I deal with such uh, ambient industrial noise going on all the time 
And you'll notice here that it, it does actually get quite complicated up in this little area here. I've actually got three uh, junctions where I've got the hull and the two dog leg, or the dog leg bulkhead and then the bulkhead as well. So these gussets that I make here are additional on top of the two, two, two layers I've already put in. I'll then put one of these gussets in where I slit it and then overlay it and then ultimately that gives me four layers and then a, another additional layer over the top of the entire um, fillet just to make sure that I'm getting that reinforcement where required. Now because it is a dog leg bulkhead around 45 degrees off the, the main bulkhead, I wanted to make sure it had tons of strength in there and I think I've achieved that with that, uh, that extra gusset and the, uh, and the extra laminate over the top. Right now I get to uh, work out whether or not I've glued this thing in place with all the filleting that I've been putting in and I'm hoping it hasn't drilled down and, and caught on the back of this module. But I'm gonna have to get over here and see if I can dislodge this. Hoping I can lift it out of my own, might need some help, but uh, it is unlikely that uh, I'm gonna go to get it out. Let's give it a crack anyway. So, um, luckily this bulkhead is uh, is not an inch higher, I'd be, uh, I'd be a gelding. But anyway, let's give it a go. It should lift. I haven't got a lot of working room here, but I've got enough to... Go on guys, say it, say it, go on. I'm waiting for you to say it. You need to get a crane, you need to have some sort of a gantry over the top. The reality is this tent, I couldn't suspend anything from this tent. I'd love to have some sort of a lifting gantry or something uh, to en enable the, the ease of getting these things in and out, but there's just no other way other than brute force. And uh, you know, when I'm here on my own on weekends, I think uh, there's no one around and not even uh, Johnny's game enough to come over when he hears me making this noise so uh you know you can't blame him for giving it a go stuff just has to move forward and the only way that can happen is by uh is by hard graft and uh and yeah this i'm just going to let this run for a little while just so you can see my pain Oh, it's an epic. I'll show you what it looks like down in there. Oh man. So, that block of foam there was what I was using to stop this from pushing against the side of the head. But uh, there we go. That's brilliant. That means I can now get in and fill it and tab all of this here, get it complete. Uh, before I finally lock this down, I've decided I need some foam uprights here to just to block it in place. It's probably going to need a little bit of reinforcement, perhaps on some of these edges. But other than that, I'm not going to worry about it. When I made this one, I knew it was going to be a deep one to get in and out. I actually have already reinforced all the base, with the exception of a piece of plywood for the head to be screwed into. So that's 
the beauty of this uh, module is it's almost finished. It just needs some further reinforcement. A little bit of reinforcement would be done. So I know it's incredibly grotty, but this is where the head sits and it screws down onto a plywood base. I've actually got a glass, a, um, a 12 or 25 mil piece of plywood under there, the same size as my head, so that I can just screw the toilet into it with some coach screws or lag screws. Um, the only thing is that because this is a, a, a sort of a house style toilet, once it's in place, the only way to remove the seat and replace the seat is to actually unbolt the head and lift it out. Um, this section here gets cut out. And this here is the shower sump, which will have like a real, probably 1100 gallon an hour or 500 gallon an hour pump down in there, which is going to accept the waste from the washing machine if I decide to put one in. Uh, and the sink and the shower will all run down in that sump and pumped away to the black water tank or the grey water tank. So, yep, we got him out and uh, I can get going. Let's see if I can get it up onto these uh, wing frames. So I've just got unbridled access in here. Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, the human crane. <laughs> 